Lead a club, sloppy drop, come home and get my rocks out. Herbie's from the south, he trying to see me knock his socks out. Told them bitches, meet me at the top, think they got lost. I'm on go like Grizz. She thought I would kiss her ass, she must ain't took a mess. Shit around my neck, it cost her arm and leg. Swear that nigga said for life, I let him get me pre. I done done it all. Feel like shot it low. Left it to the paint, but shit is not a joke. Say she got a pop, imaginary smoke. Bitch, you set it up, then put it on the floor. I done done it all. Feel like shot it low. Left it to the paint, but shit is not a joke. Say she got a pop, imaginary smoke. Bitch, you set Thank you for joining us in the Hennessy Zone. Straight talk, no chaser. This place was created for those topics that require, well, something a little stronger than just champagne. Over here, we think and drink responsibly. We gotta let them know. The classy drink Hennessy, too. <laughs> Now, we don't solve cases over here, but we do give our opinions on them for the people under the stairs. So grab your glass, scoot up, and let's henna see what's on the docket for today. Now take those glasses and raise them in the air. Let's toast. Today, we honor the power of listening, of paying attention more than we speak. Here's to the wisdom found in silence, the strength in truly hearing each other, and the growth that comes from understanding before responding. Raise your glasses high to the art of listening, the depth of attention, and the value of every voice. Cheers to mindful conversation. Hennessy Zone, let's toast. So y'all listen, what originally made me cover this story is because this one is kind of dear to my heart. Now, majority of them really are, but this one, because I used to be a property manager. I did. It was actually one of the most enjoyable jobs that I had because I was allowed to connect with people. I was their mom, their sister, their best friend, their counselor, their spiritual advisor, financial advisor sometime. <laughs> But see, I cared about my tenants, so it was more than just a job for me. Because I wanted to see my tenants have the best at life and obtain more in life than what they were currently subjected to. Because a lot of the houses that I managed, they, they weren't the best. Some of these houses were in the hood, baby. <laughs> And listen, I did this during a time where we collected cash. So I was driving house to house collecting cash for rent. But I never had to worry about being robbed because I took care of my tenants. So therefore, my tenants took care of me. Whenever you're in the area, let us know so we can be on the lookout for you. And if you've ever been in property management, you know you can see some stuff, honey. You can walk into some stuff, honey. I could do some stories and call it tales from a property manager, baby. <laughs> But honestly speaking though, a lot of these property management companies are trash. They're trash. They're money grabs. They don't care about the tenants. Hell, they don't even care about the owners. Because if they did, they would take better care of the owner's property. But they don't because they don't care. As long as they're getting paid, that's all that matters. But see, when I was managing properties, I cared about my tenants. My tenants would call me for personal advice. Actually, that's how I ended up with my two dogs helping out one of my tenants. Because I am a dog lover. And her two pits just had a litter. The father was a blue nose. The mother was a red nose. And they had a litter of about eight. So I knew she was behind on rent. So I told her, I said, you know what? You give me two of the puppies. I'll cover that portion of the rent. I would have tenants that were selling their belongings so that they could pay their rent. And I would go over there and tell them, hey, you give me this and this and I'll cover this portion of your rent for you. Because I cared about my tenants. It wasn't just about sending them to eviction court when they fell behind. Hell, everybody needs a handout and a hand up from time to time. It's just majority of the time we run into the, to these ignorant bastards like the ones that I'm getting ready to cover that put you in a messed up position and cause you to have to start over. Listen, I have seen people's lives ruined because of property management companies. I have. The first four years I did as a property manager, I worked under a management company, but I was the property manager for that management company. They were two friends who had started a company. One of them mostly dealt with the brokerage side of the business, which meant they dealt with homeowners and flipping houses. But then the other partner dealt with property management, so they dealt with the rentals. 
So I worked under the rental side. So I was responsible for collecting the rent, leasing the properties, getting the tenants, advertising. I was responsible for filing the evictions, going to eviction court with the attorney to be present for the evictions and making the payment arrangements. Everything did by myself. But then when I went and I listen I told you that's a whole story those two friends fell out one of them quit the company company dissolved on payday we woke up no job no money it was insane <laughs> that's a whole nother story time but I got a job at another management company and this was a full company so everything that I did by myself and mind you at that time I had over 350 properties that I managed by myself when I went to the company, they had a department that handled everything. So me working in maintenance as a maintenance manager, I had a team that reported to me. Listen, I would have tenants who would call me about water leaking through their light fixture in their kitchen. And I would let them know that they needed to escalate it and get someone out there to take care of it right away because it would be dangerous. And they wouldn't handle it right away because they didn't consider it an emergency. And the tenant would call me the next week with a full waterfall coming through their light fixture. And now they're scrambling around trying to figure out what to do. But oh, it's the tenant's responsibility to replace all of their stuff that's been damaged because that's what rental insurance is for child i had a tenant with almost two feet of raw sewage in their basement for almost two weeks until i called the owner and told the owner that they don't need to pay rent until it's taken care of and the house is uninhabitable you got urine and feces floating around in your basement and the management company isn't taken care of. I had a tenant come to the office completely up in arms because it was the middle of the winter, freezing cold, and they had a bedroom that didn't even have a vent in it, nor did the bathroom have a vent in it. So therefore, you can imagine what those two rooms felt like in the middle of the winter in a freezing cold city. Not only that, she had giant rats in her basement. Not only that, she had what would appear to be black mold creeping up her walls in the basement. That's why this story is a problem for me. A property management company is supposed to be the medium between the owner and the tenants. They're supposed to be the go-between to make sure the owner gets what they need and in return, the tenant gets what they need. But a lot of these management companies only care about themselves and protecting themselves. Let's check out this first video. Now the context of this video, this gentleman, I don't know if he was being evicted for unpaid rent or whatever the case may be, but it was not time for him to be evicted yet because the order had not been placed in for the sheriff to come out and complete the eviction. So he spoke with the management company and they were supposed to be giving him the opportunity to retrieve his things. But when his people showed up to retrieve his things, all of his stuff was gone. So let's check out this first video. On May 22, 2024, a bizarre turn of events unfolded in a Chambly, Georgia, apartment complex. A man facing eviction made arrangements with the leasing office to peacefully vacate the premises before the official eviction date. He even had a friend retrieve his belongings while he worked out of town. However, when the friend arrived, he discovered the locks had been changed, and he couldn't enter the apartment. The next day, the manager unlocked the apartment for the friend, revealing a shocking sight. The place was completely empty. The friend promptly FaceTimed the victim, who then contacted a neighbor with a ring doorbell camera. The doorbell footage provided crucial evidence, it clearly showed three individuals entering the apartment and leaving with the victim's belongings. The victim, armed with this video, contacted the police. The officer who responded quickly identified the culprits, three members of the apartment's maintenance crew. Upon investigation, the officer discovered a troubling pattern. Listen, if you are a renter, there are two things you definitely need. Number one, you need a doorbell camera. You need one where you can see in multiple different directions. 
one that you can hear what's going on outside your home, and one that you can communicate through. The one that I had was through Vivint, and it was one of the best security systems that I ever had. But you can get a doorbell camera off Amazon. Number two, you need renter's insurance because these management companies don't care. They're not gonna replace your thing. So you need renter's insurance to cover all of your belongings in case something dumb like this happens. The one that I had was through Lemonade. Y'all better protect yourself because they're not going to. Now in this next clip, the police have shown up on site and the gentleman who's just lost all of his belongings is going with the police in to talk to the property manager. And I just want y'all to pay attention to this property manager's behavior. Pay attention to the level of concern she seems to be giving to this tenant who walked into her office with an issue. Pretty sure you know why we're here, mm -hmm. why he called. Mm -hmm. Um, I guess, well, it's just, I mean, it's his stuff. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. I spoke to you, and I spoke to you last week, and you mm -hmm. told me that you would unlock the unit for me to come retrieve my things mm -hmm. on Friday. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not actually going to fuck me Saturday, but she called and told she was on Friday. She, she said she was going home Sunday. No, no, no. Um, I have the, the messages from our her email mm -hmm. uh, so I have the recording of the conversation that when she called you and mm -hmm. told me she was 30 minutes away mm -hmm. but she got caught up in traffic so she mm -hmm. got a little bit later. Mm -hmm. There's a video of you going to the door, unlocking mm -hmm. the door, I'm mm -hmm. looking around inside. Mm -hmm. Then after you then you contacted me again you told me all my belongings were still inside the unit. That's correct. Right? Okay. After that video, there's a video of her going to the door, the door being unlocked mm -hmm. at around 10 something, mm -hmm. the maintenance man goes inside and starts stealing more belongings. Mm -hmm. But prior to me speaking to you mm -hmm. Friday at 3.44 p.m. They mm -hmm. already started stealing things and Thursday and Wednesday prior. So I have a video of you also going inside this past week. Mm -hmm. You went inside, stepped inside, and you were in there for about 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. So you know the belongings that were already inside. Mm -hmm. So when you mm -hmm. went back, you know what was in there also. Mm -hmm. That's so, right. That, that's what we're Press pause. See, she wants to dwell on the fact, she, if she was in on this, in my opinion, she wants to dwell on the fact that supposedly they were supposed to come on Sunday, but his stuff was already cleaned out, so it wouldn't have mattered whether or not he was supposed to come on Sunday, Monday, or Tuesday if Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday there was a clean-out crew in his house removing his belongings. Then after he caught her up in that, he turned around and told her, you went in the house to see what belongings I had in there, and you also went in the house after the stuff was cleaned out, so you know stuff was removed. She didn't notify the tenant, nor did she do an investigation to see where the stuff went. This is why I say you need to protect yourself. Whenever you're having a conversation with your property management company or your landlord, get something in writing. I used to do everything through text, so there was a paper trail. We got to start learning how to protect ourselves so that we don't consistently end up victims to stuff like this. Let's continue. Yeah, that's right. Um, and you said you would bring the video so that I could see it and confirm who was what, who did what, yes, so that I can address the proper people. So do you have that? Uh, I had the video, but I was told by... Um, yeah, I told them um, right now it's a criminal investigation. Mm -hmm. So the video won't be shared right now. Okay, well, time. how can I help others? Um, see, her whole damn demeanor pisses me off. This man is letting you know that someone in your crew cleaned out my house. And all you can say is, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm face ass. All you can say is, you are gonna bring me the video. Can I see the video? Well then, how can I help? Not I'm sorry. I apologize this happened to you. It is never the mission of our company to hurt any of our tenants or to cause unnecessary loss. None of that. Just, well, <laughs> what do you want me to do about it? And y'all wonder why people go in property management companies and act a complete damn fool. It's because of trifling ass behavior like this from people in authority and people with power and people get sick and tired of it and then they start acting out. But you don't see what goes on behind the scenes to make a lot of these individuals flip the hell out the way they do. You want them to pay rent, but you don't fix anything. You go up on the rent, but you don't upgrade the house. They put in work orders that take y'all months to get to it. Come on now. So I guess, and I've asked him, but I'm gonna start from 
the basic of building a case like this, right? Mm -hmm. So to confirm with you, mm -hmm. was Mr. Evicted from his unit. No. So he was not evicted. No, not yet. Okay. Were there any maintenance orders that were put in that people were supposed to be inside the unit? No, sir. Press pause. So let me tell you how she's been caught in another lie. Because anytime you go into a tenant's home, there should be a work order. The simple fact that he told her she was in his apartment twice means that you're lying because you have to give a tenant 24 hour notice before entering their property. So that is an order. You went in twice, which means there should have been two orders out there just for you entering the property. If you are renting, you better start looking up your tenant laws in your state to know what your landlords can and cannot do. They cannot enter your unit without your permission and without a notice. And that notice should be in your file. If it's not in your file, that is a problem. Okay. Um, how many maintenance people do you have on site? Three. Three. Okay. Mm -hmm. Do you happen to have the names of those gentlemen? I do, yes. Are you able to provide that? Absolutely. Do you need their names at it? Names and birthdays if you have them. I could probably find those birthdays. It should be in our system somewhere. Okay. Um, I'll put it from my laptop. That's fine. I'm not in a rush. Would you like their positions or oh, that? Oh, that, that, yes, if that's possible. Okay, cool. Is the unit locked up now? Does your key still work to the unit? Do you know? Mm -hmm. Are we able to walk over to the unit just to yeah. I can take some I'll photos and stuff? Yeah. Um, the only thing that was removed after the last time that we spoke was whatever that young lady took in the bag, and that was it. The officer accompanied the victim back to the apartment to investigate further. Yeah. Look at this, y'all. All this man's stuff gone. There's no way she didn't know this. You go in a house and it's full of stuff and go back in it and it's completely empty and you don't have questions. Chad. Congress was on the floor. It's Clothes gone. Shoes <laughs> gone. <laughs> food gone. <clears throat> this is a nice it's apartment, nice. though. The TV was mounted? Yeah. I came and got the. I had heard you the Xfinity box. Yeah. The Xfinity box was sitting up here behind the TV. Okay. They on the floor. I had my stove too. Like, not no cheap stove, but my stove. A lot more time. And on top of all of that, the locks were changed. She would have had to account for those locks. Either the locks had to be purchased or they already had them on site. Either way, it's a part of inventory that has to be accounted for. How do you change locks on a house before you allow someone to remove their property from it? Either she's in on this or she's a horrible property manager and the company needs to fire her and get someone else. I vote she's in on it. But in this next clip, the officer is getting ready to start interviewing the maintenance staff. So check out these clips. You. I was talking to you. I'm sorry. I'll see you in. I'll see you in 20. Okay. Okay. Bye. So I just got some more information. Okay. Um. One of those people on that list did admit to taking the items. Which which gentleman is that? The last one, David. Is he still here? Yep. Can I speak to him? Absolutely. Let me call him back. Press damn pause again. 
See, this is why I say I think she's in on it. Because the minute the police come on the scene, all communication ceases because it's now an open investigation. But you're having conversations with these individuals outside of the police. How do we know what you're telling them? You could be trying to protect yourself. Come on now, she should have known better than this. You wait till the police leave, now you want to call them and have a conversation? Where was the conversation when the tenant called you and reported what happened at his house? That would have been the time to have a conversation about what happened to his property. But you wait till the police walk away, now you're contacting them? Probably coaching them what to say? Come on y'all. Sometimes we think we so smart, we don't. Yeah. Yeah. He, he said he stole out of the laundry. All he said was two things. That's all he said. I think it was the couch and the bed. That's all he said. He did not say anything else. Okay. Um, meet me at the office. Okay. He's on his way. Thank you. You're welcome. I'm going to talk with him. I can talk to him outside. Okay. okay. That's okay. Let me go check out what's going on. Yeah, okay. okay. Go ahead, you can just have a seat in the car. Uh, I'm gonna uh, talk with him, and then we're gonna go from there. Yeah. But just you know what I'm saying? Yeah, you you let me. You, we here now, so you gotta let me. Gotcha. It's like Training Day. You ever seen the movie Training Day? Yeah. It's not what you know. Yeah. What you can prove. So we gotta. We gotta handle it like that. I'm gonna read you something, okay? Everybody seen it on TV. Everybody probably knows it, but I gotta read it to you, okay? What's this before you read it to me? This is your Miranda warnings. Let me, let me just explain what's up. Uh, it was just a miscommunication, not on my part. Okay. I was told wrong information. I got you, but before we dive into that, let okay. me read this to you, okay? You have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can and will be used against you in a court of law. You have the right to speak to an attorney and to have an attorney present during any questioning. If you cannot afford an attorney, one will be provided for you at government expense. Knowing and understanding your rights as I have as I have explained them to you, are you willing to answer any questions without an attorney present? I can. Okay, so that's a yes? All right, so you said there was some miscommunication yes. going on? Yes. Tell me about that. What's okay. the miscommunication? I don't, don't, don't want to throw nobody under the bus. That's fine. But I'm just uh, a follower of many things, but we got the message that it was going to be an eviction for today. I okay. was told to go ahead by my supervisor, Sammy. Let's go get it. Take it out. Hurry up before it hit the curb. So he okay. heard what I can get. Everybody got stuff, not just me. But okay. I have the stuff. If you want it back or if you want to sell it to me, we can do something. But okay. if you want it back, I'll give it back. No I got you. And does Sammy work on site here too or is he off yes, site? He's at the pool right now. Okay. But yeah. And All right. Javar making both making his text. But me and Sammy went up there, I broke the sofa down. I got it in my crib. I live on property, but I just don't want him to know where I live. I got but you. I got you. Well, that's what we're doing. That's what we're okay. I'm not a thief, you know, I work here. I just did good furniture, good, good stuff. And you were told it was gonna be an eviction? Yes. And so before it hit the yeah, curve- She sent the message out, these are all evictions for Monday. We went in there Friday. So I got called you. my brother, he got a truck, me and my 13 year old son, we moved everything from across, I stand this building right here between me and you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's where it went. There are a few problems that I have with this. There's something called a moral code. This is the code that guides your behavior, your standards, your objectives, your morals. There's a such thing as saying no when you know something is wrong. No one should have to tell you not to go into someone else's house when an eviction hasn't gone through. Unless you have something from the tenant in writing saying that they no longer want anything that's in the house, you're not allowed in there, no matter what your supervisor or anyone else says. So why would you agree to something that you knew was wrong, no matter who gave you the permission? 
this is where we got to start thinking at. You remember when mama used to tell you just because somebody tell you to jump off a bridge, does that mean you're going to do it? Just because your friend jumps off a building, does that mean you're going to do it? That's this situation. Just because somebody told you it was okay, when you already knew it wasn't, why would you go along with it? A lot of states got rid of the whole putting people's stuff on the curb. I know the state that I was a property manager in did. If you wanted to put their stuff out, baby, you had to contact a storage company and have a storage company come remove it. You had to pay the fees and the tenants would have to retrieve their stuff from storage. There was no putting it on the curb. Now, I don't know about this state, but still, you knew not to go in that man's house before the eviction was final. Y'all tried to pull a fast one and it caught up with you. That's the truth, because he can't even look this officer in his face when he talking. I was told never trust nobody that can't look you in the eye. I know the issue. I got you. Oh, God. Miscommunication. Yeah, and I was going to talk to my man, but. He was right here. I yeah, nah, nah, you did, nah, nah, you did the right thing. You did the right thing. You have your ID on you by yes, chance? Yes, I did. This is, this is bad, man. Wow. Well, in a sense, I'm gonna tell you it is. I know. And the reason why, and I'm, I, I'm just a straight shooter. Like I, I, I don't like to soften blows. I like people to just know what's Please. going on. Um, the reason why it's bad is because he was coming to get his stuff. Came to pick up his stuff on Saturday, and everything gone. Um, and so you imagine, you know, it's, it's like right, you—you right. come home, right? And somebody went and took your stuff. Um, I just got the bedroom set and the sofa. Okay. And uh, my son like a photograph, a positive. You're black. You're motivated. You know, that type. So you said bedroom set and sofa. And sofa. Does the bedroom set include the um, nightstands? Yes. Okay. And that's all I grab. Headboard, matches, box spring, rails, two nice stands. Okay. Um, like I said, I just know how to be blunt. Yeah. Right now, it's, it's burglary. Right. But we all um, grab. We all grab. Oh, no. We got video. Okay. <laughs> we got video. Okay. So everybody, everybody face on it? Clear as day. Locks showing, swinging, and everything. So, <laughs> yeah, it, it's, it's made this team mess up everybody. I'm not a supervisor. It doesn't matter if you're a supervisor or not. You knew better than going in the house. Take responsibility for your actions in this. You made a dumb decision and you got caught. That's something that we hate to do when we fuck up. We hate taking responsibility. We hate being accountable for what we did wrong. It's always someone else's fault. Yes, the supervisor might have told you it was okay, but you had a responsibility in knowing that it was wrong and saying no. You would want someone to do the same thing for you. You wouldn't want to hear something about a supervisor and somebody has gone in your house and robbed it. Come on now. There was no miscommunication. It was perfectly communicated for y'all to go in that house and clear it out before the eviction. You knew what you were doing. Again, I say, you just got caught. Um, and so now that I have that piece of information, because I'm a, again, I'm just a straight shooter. So I'm going to tell I'm you. I'm a straight shooter too. And she would have, I would have talked to her. I would have told her. I don't lie. So, so my job. And if it's just with, with this piece of information, right, it changes some things. Um, because it changes some things with the aspect of orders and who was given because without this information with you know saying hey we got the eviction notices we were clearing them out whatever um all three of y'all were gonna get a warrant it was gonna be just straight, straight like that and then i was gonna come back here later today with a van and everybody gonna get in a van and everybody gonna go to DeKalb county i'm just it i'm just being honest with you um but that piece of information it changes some stuff so now I need to go talk to, you said Sammy is the supervisor? Yes. And he's by the pool right now? What does Sammy look like? He's black male or? Black, uh, uh, slim guy with um, locks. With locks. Oh, okay. He's the one with locks. Who lives here? Bob Goldman got one stick. Oh, there they go. Yeah. You see him? Uh-huh. Talk. You mind talking with me? Yes, sir. All right. 
I'm gonna read you something too, like I read everybody else. But you read me first. Give Miranda warnings. And then we'll, we'll go from there. You have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can and will be used against you in a court of law. You have the right to speak to an attorney and to have an attorney present during any questioning. If you cannot afford an attorney, one will be provided for you at government expense. Knowing and understanding your rights as I have explained them to you, are you willing to answer any questions without an attorney present? We can proceed, because I ain't do Okay. All right. So like I told everybody else, man, I'm just a straight shooter. I'm gonna just tell you how it is, okay? Uh -huh. We have a tenant here uh -huh. that was, I guess put on an eviction list. He's supposed to be getting evicted. Uh -huh. um, he was told by property management that he'll have the weekend to retrieve his property from out the apartment. Okay. Over the course of the weekend, you and some other employees were seen entering him into his unit and grabbing his belongings. So. Uh-huh. I didn't grab anything out of the unit as far as his belongings, but it was trash. The other than that, I did not take anything out okay. of the what unit. Okay, like what was trash? Trash as far as like the, the perishable, the food that he left out uh -huh. that was just sitting right there, that was it. But okay. besides that. Okay. Was there an eviction notice or? It was yeah. a, so I was off for a couple of days last week. Okay. So when I got back that Friday, um, Received a message, went up there, peeped my head in, bugs, gnats, etc. Trash. I don't touch stuff when it comes to eviction, like their personal property. Okay. But no, sir, I didn't do that. Okay. Now, again, I state, all I had took out was some trash. Okay. Besides that, I don't have any of his, any of his belongings at all. Okay. So you remember previously the property manager said that there was no work orders, right? There would have been a work order needed for him to enter in, even just to peek his head in to see what was left. There would have been a clean out order for him to remove the trash or any perishables that was left out in the house. But none of that would have been authorizable until the eviction was completed. This is why I say they all in on it. Because what are you peeking your head in his property for before the day of the eviction? If the order came from the property manager, why would she even tell you to do that before the eviction? Because she would have known that was wrong. She would have known that was against landlord-tenant law. But he's not admitting to anything. He got ready to and then he caught himself and just repeated, I said I just removed trash. We got to learn how to start paying attention to what people say and what people do. That's why I say over here we think and drink responsibly. Because we going to toast it up, but we going to think it up as well. Is it normal to go in apartments when there's an eviction notice coming out? Like to so, see your head in? So... Yes, it's normal for me to walk the units. Okay. But far as like just going into the units, like nah, but trash wise, far as refrigerators, yeah. stoves, appliances, stuff like that, yes. But besides that, no sir. Okay. Alright. Um what did you tell anybody else that they can go I like, give permission to go into the unit and oh, no, sir. take belongings or anything like that? No, sir, why would I do that? Okay. All right. People do different things, man. I, no, I don't try to understand the human mind. Um, Touche. But definitely, no. Do you know if anybody else went into the unit and grabbed so, items? From what was told to me, okay. it was happening at 11 o'clock at night or whatever time of, whatever it was. Mm -hmm. But as far as me physically seeing anybody, no, sir, I didn't. So I can't say, hey, I seen X, Y, and Z because I didn't see X, Y, and Z. Gotcha. Do you have your ID on you? Yeah, I do. Perfect. And then you said all you took was trash out there. That's trash. Perishable. Perishable. Nothing. I want y'all to remember, this is the maintenance supervisor. He's in charge of all of the guys. He's in charge of the maintenance. He's in charge of the clean outs. He's in charge of the walkthroughs. This is the supervisor, so I need y'all to remember that. And right now, we have two different stories. We have the first guy, who was the maintenance staff, who said that he received the order from the maintenance supervisor. This is the maintenance supervisor now saying he never gave an order. So now I need y'all to remember that. The title. Yes, and the title. 
So, yeah, no. All right. Sir, would you mind talking with me? Sure. All right, cool. I'm going to read you something. I read it to Sammy. I read it to everybody. Let's protect you and make sure I'm doing my job correctly. Yes, All right, it's just your, it's your Miranda warnings. Have you ever seen any kind of cop show, TV show? You know it, you've heard it, but I got to read it all the way through, okay? Right. You have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can and will be used against you in a court of law. You have the right to speak to an attorney and to have an attorney present during any questioning. If you cannot afford an attorney, one will be provided for you at government expense. Knowing and understanding your rights as I have explained them to you, are you willing to answer any questions without an attorney present? Go ahead, man. Yeah, I'm good. Appreciate it. Yeah, sure, why not? Okay, perfect. So, I'm not, I don't like to assume anything, so I'm gonna just tell you why I'm yeah, even asking. step over here to show you, man. Yeah, it's a little hot, <laughs> man. I appreciate yeah. that. Yeah, come over here. The third suspect, despite being caught on camera carrying a TV, insisted he only changed the locks and checked the unit's condition. So, what I'm investigating right now is essentially a burglary, right? Yes, sir. Certain things have come to light during the course of me asking people what happened. But the original complaint is, a gentleman was called, said, hey, we're gonna start the eviction process, mm -hmm. but we'll allow you to get your stuff out. Right. He set up to get his belongings out. Right. And while doing so, well, before the person was able to come and grab his belongings, his belongings were taken from his apartment. Right. Okay, there is surveillance footage that does show every maintenance personnel on this property entering that apartment and leaving with something. So I'm gonna start with you from the basic. You know, did you enter the apartment? I'm saying uh, it's procedure. Okay, what's you know? the procedure? This was a yes or no question that required a yes or no answer. Anytime, just about, anyone starts a sentence with, I'm saying, you know anything coming after that is probably going to be a lie. Then you follow it up with, it's procedure. Because you feel like just telling the police officer that what you did was a part of procedure will get him off your heels in a situation where you know you was wrong. Y'all know good and doggone well. <laughs> Y'all ain't heard nothing good come after a person has said, I'm saying, why you cheat on me? I'm saying, why you hit that boy? I'm saying, why you steal that? I'm saying, it's the segue to your lie. I'm saying, <laughs> come on, y'all. You know, to go in there, you know, uh, trash out, you know, um, you know, do maintenance requests and, okay. you know, stuff like Was that. Was there a maintenance request? You know, uh, cause you know, uh, I'm saying, uh, cause you know, uh, cause it was, uh, come on y'all, child. Anytime you get too many uhs in a sentence with I'm saying, and you know, <laughs> they trying to convince you of something that they want you to know. <laughs> cause how am I supposed to know? You know, uh, cause, uh, you know, uh, shut your, you know, uh, ass up and tell the truth. Can't even fake a lie. You know what I'm saying? Uh, well, you know, it was a main request, you know, to change the lock or whatever at the time. Okay. And, you know, it was a uh, main request, you know, to go out there, uh, you know, see what was going on, uh, you know, for trashing out process and stuff like that. Okay, I got you. So, was that it? Just a maintenance request for the, the change of the locks? And to, and to check the condition of the unit. Right. Was there anything that was requested to take the items from the unit? No. Oh. So remember again, in the beginning, the property manager said there was no work orders out for anything regarding this unit. So now we have Mr. Uh saying that there was a maintenance request to change the locks. Why would you have a maintenance request to change locks on a building on a unit that has not been properly evicted? It's against the law. Why would you have a maintenance request to go in and do a trash out walkthrough in a unit that has not been properly evicted? You would not because it's against the law. You have no right to go in that unit except with a 24 hour notice. And how are you going to have a trash out walkthrough when the tenant hasn't even come to get the rest of his stuff out? So what is the purpose of the walkthrough unless you're casing out his unit to see what you want to get out of it? There it is. Let's continue. Okay. Did you take any items from the unit? No. You sure? No. 
No, nah, you didn't or no, nah, you're not no, sure? No, sir, I did not. Okay. All right. So, is you on camera? I'm quite sure I'm here. You know what I'm saying? I'm out. But, but taking stuff. I don't, I don't see how that can be possible. Because I don't got nothing in my possession said that I took anything, Officer Black. I, I didn't say you still got it in your possession. No, no I'm just I'm saying. I'm asking if you took it. Well, you know what I'm saying? Saying that I took something? I'm asking. <laughs> no, I'm breathing hard. It's right. exasperating. So, so the only reason why you went into the unit was change the locks and to check the status of the the unit to see right. what the condition of the unit. Right. Was. Okay. And there was no order for anything to be removed from the apartment. You no. didn't take anything. No, sir. Okay. You have your ID on you by chance? Yes, sir. I do. Perfect. All right. Thank you. Child, now he done already told the man that we have you on camera. At that point, would be the time for you to come honest and say what you took. But no, you gonna stand there being dumb, dumb ditty, breathing hard. Y you know, I'm saying, I'm saying, huh? Uh, you got me? Yeah, come on. <laughs> Y'all, we can't be this dumb in real life. This should have probably been covered in the caught being ignorant unit. <laughs> That's where this should have been covered. Because what? Child. So we almost done. But in this next clip, they go back to the management office. By this time, corporate has made it there. And now all three of them are going to be arrested because everybody's story is different. Nobody's story is matching. And in the next clip, you're going to see all that corporate really cares about in this situation. So check it out. This is my original manager. Hi, Hi, I'm doing well. How about yourself? Nice Might not want to touch these gloves. Yeah. We'll do that. Um, can we get all three to this office one at a time, please? Do you care who goes first? You take your pick. Okay. In case somebody goes to jail today, can I have them take off their gray star uniforms so that they don't have mug shots with our company name on them? So your tenant has lost all of their belongings due to your maintenance staff. And the only thing you're concerned about is making sure they don't go to jail with your uniform on, with your company logo on it. That's what you're concerned about in this situation. But see, this is what y'all be up against when you're dealing with these management companies. They don't care. All they care about is their name and their logo. They don't care how you live. They don't care how you survive. They don't care about emergencies. They don't care about setbacks. All they care about is that name and that logo. Y'all, these management companies are trash. The first thing sh that came out of her mouth should have been about her tenant and making sure her tenant was okay. But instead, listen, I'm a believer in the law of first mention. What you mention first is what's most important to you. The fact that what she mentioned first was those shirts with that logo on it lets you know in this situation, that's their main concern. That's all they care about. They don't want the world to know that they hired three trash ass maintenance men who are around here robbing tenants. And they're definitely not going to implicate the property manager because that's really going to make them look bad. We can make that request. It just depends on how compliant they want to be because they all are, are all going to jail today. Okay. All three. Okay. Um, uh, Don't let them know that. No, 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 no. Oh, no. Uh, if, if and when you notify them that they're going to be arrested, can we'll request at that time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Thank you very much. Not a problem. Um, we we want to somehow get the residents' belongings back to him. Okay. Um. So I know where. Because I, I personally just spoke with all of them, and they did. <laughs> oh, they did. Confess. I I know where his bed. Because so as an far. employer, I had to open up that dialogue because we need to take action on our end as well. Yeah. So. Um, I know as far as his bed and sofa goes. He's like, I don't want that back. Because, <laughs> you know. That's a bad one. So bad. Right. Like, right um, I think the big thing that he's really looking for is yeah. his MacBook. Okay. I know. Which, okay. okay. Is MIA right now. Nice. Only one person confessed to me mm -hmm. and what they took. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. And so the stuff that they took, stuff that he doesn't really want back. But his MacBook right now. Yeah. And so he's working on actually logging into his Apple ID yeah. and tracking it. Do they yeah. have, because a ring camera had been mentioned, do, mm -hmm. do they have the video of who walked out with certain mm -hmm. items? It's just, okay. it was in a bag. 
until it's hard to say who had the bag. But no, it, you see Claire's Day mattress, yeah, a TV, yeah, everything. Yeah. And David is coming. Okay. And what I'll actually do too is I'll give you my business card with the case number on it. And I'll give you my business card as well. That way, if you have any questions. Perfect. Even in handcuffs, they pleaded with the officer. They asked him to speak with the victim, hoping to find a way out of arrest. What's your name? I gotta confirm. I think it's a felony though. What? Burglary. Oh, come on. I don't have my phone. He's in the car. Hmm? The victim wants to, not me. I did, I did talk to him. I did. And he is too. I know, but we couldn't talk to him. What? Because they said we couldn't talk to him. But no, they talked to the man. I was trying to get everything rectified. Okay, so, so, we'll do this. My partner left to go get the van. Once he get back here, I'll go talk with the victim, because he's still here. And, and, we'll, we'll go from there. Alright? Because it's already ugly when I was right here. Yes, that'll be good if you can. I got you. Get I ain't going over. I just sit down and do that stuff. I got, I got my eye. I'm not doing all that. I don't. People were adamant. Like, he really, because, I mean, you, got, you came home, all your shit gone. How would you feel? Mm -hmm. I, I ain't saying, but I don't keep up with all the rest of it. No, no, I'm talking about your personal house. You came home, all your stuff gone. You'd be mad. Yeah, but it's not a rectified situation. Right. Yeah. But like I said, that wasn't offered earlier. You know what I'm saying? When I spoke to everybody individual, nobody said, hey, let me talk to him. Let me try so, to. Yeah, yeah you did. did. And but the thing was, you offered his bag. You don't he, want his bag back. It's already been gone in somebody else's house. Uh, we talk to the dude. So uh, we can rectify. Give him his stuff. Give him his stuff. Right. I can only do one thing at a time. I'm sitting right here. Oh. I ain't going on. Got you. And then we go from there. Right, that'll be good. We can just get his stuff back with you. You know. In the prisons, so nothing you know gonna break out. Just a second. You want headphones? Just to make sure. I know. Okay. Now they want to talk. Now they want to talk. He gave each of them the opportunity to tell the truth when he questioned them. And everybody outside of the first one who didn't take accountability for his actions said they didn't do anything. But now all of a sudden they want the officer to go outside and talk to the victim and see if they can work something out after you done robbed his house. So all three of them are going to jail as they should. And the fourth person that should go along with them should be that property manager because I feel like she's in on it. See, this is what y'all be up against. And I'm willing to believe this is not the first time they've done this. This is the first time someone has been bold enough to stand up to it and call the police and do something about it. Cause they was too casual, honey. Listen, if I had the money, I would start a property management company. I would to show people how to successfully merge managing tenants and managing owners. Because that thing is a two way street. It's not a one way. It's not only to benefit you, but that's what these management companies do. They get in business for the money of it. Listen, me and the management company that I work for stayed into it. We stayed into it because I'm not one of those who can sit idly by and watch you mistreat people and not say something. That'd be my problem. I had a tenant that called me one day crying on the telephone because she said she'd been calling and calling since the management company took over her house that she was renting the upstairs and the downstairs from and this girl had not one lock on her house, one doorknob in her house, none outside exterior or inside interior upstairs or downstairs and this girl wasn't living on a nice street where she didn't have to worry about whether or not somebody would try to kick in her door 
Not only that, her upstairs didn't even have heat, but she was paying over $2,400 in rent to rent the upper and the lower. And every time she would call them and tell them about it, they told her she was lying and told her if she didn't pay her rent, she would be evicted. When she was added to my case and I told her, baby, let me come out and check and see what you're talking about. The girl started crying on the telephone like, that's what I've been asking them to do. I went over there, took pictures, did write-ups, got on the phone with the owner because, see, I had relationships with the owner. When the management company wouldn't do what they needed to, I got on the phone with the owner to make sure the tenants had what they needed because I needed to be able to collect rent. How am I going to collect rent if y'all not fixing nothing in the house? Come on now. I told that owner her rent needed to be dropped until all of these issues were taken care of. Every one of her windows had a crack in it. Her electrical and heat was ghetto rigged to all run off the same box. And she had a boiler system in the house instead of a furnace for the upstairs and lower. So in the middle of the winter, you know what happens with a boiler. And do you know how expensive it is to replace a boiler? Look, I said it before and I say it again. Y'all better start knowing your rights. Look up what the landlord-tenant laws are in your area and familiarize yourself with what your landlord and your property management company can and cannot do. Because majority of them don't care. They don't care. My daughter went through a whole loss of her baby at seven months pregnant. I had to fly in to be by my daughter's side while she delivered her stillborn baby. Baby. And when she contacted the property management company to let them know what was going on and to let them know she was in the hospital and would be a little behind on her rent, they told her they don't make arrangements. She needed to figure it out. My daughter had to leave maternity leave, not fully healed, and go back to work so she could pay her rent. I even put it on my cash app to let people know like, hey, right now, any cash apps you send are going to support my daughter who just lost her baby to help her get back on her feet. Did I receive any cash apps? I received one from a lady and I did a video to thank her. It was $5, but it was the thought that counted. And when she sent it, she said, here's for your little angel. These management companies don't care about y'all. I would say get a house, but the mortgage companies don't care either. Hell, they care even less. But drop in the comments and let me know what you think about this story. What you think about these property management companies. Let me know if you've had any horror stories with any management companies. Do me a favor and hit that like and subscribe button. Hit the notification bell so you'll be notified when we jump into whichever section we jump into for another show. On the next Tennessee Zone, I'm going to be covering this case that I'm very familiar with because I was actually a property manager for them when it happened. This idiot drowned his baby in the river and we're going to get into that case in the next Tennessee Zone. So make sure you hit that like and subscribe and notification bell so you'll be notified when the case drops. Also, if any of my Hennessy Zone connoisseurs or my champagne game is into murder mystery and murder mystery theater, why don't you consider subscribing to my murder mystery channel, Inky Noir Champagne Mysteries. Over there, we cover all unsolved mysteries and it's done like an old school Poirot, <laughs> Sherlock Holmes story, black and white with suspenseful music and the sound of rain in the background. So far we've covered Rebecca Zahau, Natalie Wood, and the Black Dahlia. We also just released the prequel because I always do a prequel then I drop the full show to kind of let you know what you're going to be getting in the full show. But we just dropped the prequel for Jean French who was murdered around the time that the Black Dahlia was. So these are all true crime stories. So go over there and check it out. We'd love to have you in the Noir Syndicate. So go ahead and consider becoming a shadow hunter over there. <laughs> Thank you for joining me for another episode of Hennessy Zone. Straight talk, no chaser. Until next time, Hennessy, Hennadoo, think and drink responsibly and stay true. Till we meet again, ta-ta.